Hello everyone, this is Fun of Mighty here, and today I have an Alistair X female reader story. So I know that someone at one point asked me, hey, is it possible for you to do more male ex gender neutral stories? And I don't intend to worry you guys. There will be an Alistair X male reader coming out soon, or at least a gender neutral. But I am not very good at writing yaoi, as I tend to keep it more on the romantical side of things. Um, mainly because I just have a hard time writing smut. Um, so be on the be aware of the fact that I don't often write yaoi, so that's probably why I have more difficulty with it. Anyway, um, so I decided that for this, I would, um, for this I decided I want to go ahead and try a blushing idea for the, for this story. Is simply titled blushing, and I and the dress that is being shown right now is what you're going to be wearing in the story. Anyway, let's get started. You are getting ready for the day to start, choosing to wear an innocent red dress. That's the dress. That's what the dress says above. And if you don't like th the dress, then just insert your favorite red dress. It's red for a reason. Trust me. You are well aware that most people in how typically wear something skanky or whorish. But even though you were a horrible person when you were alive, you always kept yourself looking classy. So why should you be why should you be any different in hell? After you got dressed, you put on your makeup and headed down to the lobby of the hotel. You were a recovering serial killer and thief, so that's what landed you both in hell and this hotel. Since you were the first person to come forward to showing interest in the hotel, you were naturally smothered by Charlie and even Baggy a bit. You never saw what you did on the sur upon the surface is that bad compared to what others had done to you in the past. One would call you insane for that, but that was your logic. People morally were screwed in the head as they murdered a person's mentality, so you thought it no different to do it physically. Alice had just gone into the hotel, and he stopped dead in his tracks as he saw you at the bar alone. But what, it, what caught his eye the most was the dress you were wearing. It was absolutely gorgeous on you, and just the simple way that it fit your figure made you simply look divine. Alistair was so entranced by his, by your beauty that he didn't even notice Angel just come up to him. Hey, uh, Al, you alright there, buddy? Alistair snapped out of his chance, a trance and glared at Angel. What do you want, Angel? I see you're eyeing your name over there. Why don't you go say hi? Alistair rolled his eyes and erased Angel's mouth. Which is a stream reference, by the way. He then walked over to you, his smile returning. Hello, my dear, your name? Might I ask why you're so dressed up for? What you're so dressed up for? Huh? Oh, no reason. Well, I must say, you look marvelous. You should perhaps consider dressing up more often. He blushed a bit. Uh, thank you? Alice took a seat next to you, causing you to blush a little more. Alistair was completely oblivious to your flushed face, carrying on to ask a certain question. Your name? May I buy you a drink? Wait, what? You felt your, your face burn bright red. When Alistair finally looked over, he saw he was confused. Your face was completely flushed. What did he do? Why were you blushing? Did he do something wrong? But then he decided to test this. You know. To see how just how far he can push this a little. Well, my little fawn, I don't think it's very fair of you to have an empty glass. Fawn? Why, yes. He felt so strange. He didn't know what else to do, so he just nodded your head. He smiled widely and snapped his fingers, and poof! A glass of a, sh a glass of a strawberry drink. He giggled. Did you choose strawberries because you're a strawberry pimp? A ring sounds for a second, and his face starts to flush. <laughs> oh my goodness! Did I just make the one and only radio demon blush? He chuckled darkly. Dear, do you really want to play this game? Maybe, he said teasingly. He acted via instinct and kissed you. Despite the fact that this was a rough game, the kiss was extremely gentle and almost hesitant. So to relieve him, you kiss him back. You both touched noses as you kissed, causing you to laugh. You broke the kiss, laughing. Alice was in following suit. But when you both opened your eyes, you saw each other's flushed faces. You are adorable, your name. Right back at you, my little dear. 
Yuba flapped again before going right back into kissing. The rest of the day was just spent cuddling, kissing, and listening to Alice's wonderful radio station. Words were never really needed, as all the blushing and kissing said it all. Man. I kind of thought that this was pretty cute of an idea, and I don't, re- but I don't really think I executed it that well. I feel like that there could have been more potential for it, but, you know, I kind of feel like that that's okay. Um, so long as you guys are enjoying it, then I don't really see an issue. So thank you all so very much for watching. And as always, this is Fandomator, and I'll be seeing you all very soon. Bye-bye.